two, one. Hey everybody, it's Neil the Dastardly Gentleman. Long time no see. Tonight we're going to do a podcast. It's been a while. Well, not too long a while, but it's been a while since I've done one. Look. I can't hear you yet, Frank. Hold on. We're still doing an intro. Huh. Okay. Shh. So, let's uh, let's do this podcast. We're going to do it on my... <laughs> That's stupid. Let me try it again. We're going to do it on masculinity tonight. So, let's do the, uh, the actual podcast intro. Ready? Ready? And go. awful what's frank's picture there <laughs> he's <laughs> you look you like that that was two that was two intros more intros than you can <laughs> deal with <laughs> more intros than your body has room for <laughs> two intros back to back no problem okay no problem. <laughs> hey frank thanks for cheering on our own Sorry. podcast Hey, you know what? I like I like to support me. Frank's glad to look at himself. <laughs> I, you know what? I was gonna, I was gonna try to like be like, hey, you know, here's here's some bits for Neil being creative. But then I realized I actually see what he's actually done, and I wish I could uh, undo that transaction. By the way, that is literally of all the pictures that I've ever drawn. That is the fucking picture you choose for Frank. Yep. Look, also, you know what? Honestly, that that I don't think there's a picture on this channel that more accurately represents me. <laughs> I don't have anything else that's more phallus shaped. <laughs> also, also that's more um, uh, cunning evil. You know, the the face of someone who obviously, definitely farted in the elevator. <laughs> Listen, that's you worked really hard again. on that picture, Jer. I don't want it to go to the archives forever. We need to bring it back every now and then. No, that means it goes in the garbage <laughs> where it belongs. <laughs> All right, so tonight we're going to your double intro tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about toxic masculinity um, and that or Gillette just like ad. masculinity, you know. Um, if you haven't uh, met us before, I'm Neil. Thanks for joining. Uh, we got Jeremiah over there in the flannel. It's looking, brand new. Looking like smooth McGroove. Uh, brand brand new from a uh, uh, from where? Uh, Goodwill. <laughs> brand new from their store. <laughs> it was only ninety nine cents. Um, it was three dollars. I'll have you know, it was right. a high dollar. I wear Stefan's clothes. I look <laughs> incredible. <laughs> and we've got Frank down in the bottom left corner with his awesome picture. Uh, since he is having internet issues, we can't do video and audio at the same time. So, hey, what's up, baby? How's it going? But he's still got that. Talk about sweet how voice. manly I am today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So yeah. manly. <laughs> So, uh, so, so, so madly, I bet on the hounds. <laughs> so, what would be your guys' definition, or what do you think when you hear the word masculinity? Let's start with you, Jer. Me? Yeah. Well, you definitely did. a guy with a beard and a flannel shirt. I mean, <laughs> no, really? um, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I like okay. My right. like the way that I view masculinity when I when I think of that, I think of like a guy who is at least like well mannered or. I can't talk. Well mannered, and I don't know, cares about how he looks, like his appearance, and usually is like the guy that kind of takes charge and doesn't really put up with shit. But I don't really see him as like you know, an asshole like us. But you know, like I don't know. I I think Gaston. Gaston. Is like, but Gaston's a total Gaston. asshole. Yeah, well, that's like but, that, that. That's the. Um... Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, it's your it's your definition. Yeah. Go for it. Listen, he's not an asshole. He's just <laughs> not very smart. <laughs> he's just con- he's just a confused lad. Yeah. You know, Where all are those... all the pictures in this book? How do you even read it? <laughs> all, all the, the, the Neil Noggin. 
<laughs> you know? Frank, what do you think? Uh, I think masculinity is a set of attributes, behaviors, and roles associated with boys and men. Boys and men? Is that what boys you really men. think? Or are you wait, just wait. being uh, contradictory? I said boy, boys and men. But, boys to know. men? Boys to boys men. Boys to men. Yes. Uh, I wear my pants backwards. So hard to they say goodbye. Wear their pants backwards, Frank. I don't That's know. That's crisscross. That, uh, like I fucking know. <laughs> it's gonna make you. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's that's where we draw the line. I don't know who Chris Cross is. So like, Thank God. I mean, God damn it. I mean, like, I really wish that I had more culture in my life. I do too. <laughs> don't we all, Frank? Don't we all? <laughs> I'm le- I'm leaving. I mean, there's the door. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Leave. Um. So what, no. What, really, you, what, what do you What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what, is that actually what you really think, Frank, or is that? Uh... No, that that is absolutely. Um, also, just like uh, full of, like just you know, as a side note, um, I didn't know this, but Herman Lee is apparently on Twitch, and he has a hundred and fifty people watching him. <laughs> Who? Oh, that's terrible. Herman Lee, the lead the lead guitar player for Dragon Force. Oh. He's on Twitch, and he he literally has nobody practically watching him. I mean, for someone of his practically legendary shred skills, I don't know, completely unrelated. I just happen to see it come up on my little feed thing. I, I feel like 150 is way too many people for that man. I feel like 150 <laughs> should at least get him to not fall off a fucking stage and attack of the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, man. I but seriously, like for so for masculinity, no, I think that the definition of masculinity pretty much suits my my overall definition. I mean, right. what the hell else do you want? Are you saying that a girl can't be masculine, Frank? I'm saying that there are traits and attributes commonly associated with men and boys. Hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I guess, yes, if that woman happens to act or display characteristics typical of, of male and uh, male behavior. How about that? What kind of characteristics are those, Frank? Let's see what the definition says. Oh man, <laughs> this asshole! If I wanted to read no, a fucking know, dictionary, I wouldn't be. You know, a... we, we could have brought a fucking thesaurus on here in the place of Frank. We don't even need him. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate that. Like you, you think that you could easily replace me with and have the same level of of discourse with me as you could with the full breadth of human understanding. So I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, I am uh, uh, I, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, what, uh, so Western, it says here, Western society includes strength, courage, independence, violence, and assertiveness. I, I actually agree with that. Violence. I agree with that completely. Yeah, absolutely. There's always, we yeah, among among two men, there's always like the um, uh, the unspoken, uh, I guess, threat of violence. Because I mean, that's just like that's kind of how men. Uh, that that's the that would be the ultimate, the ultimate end answer for any male to male dispute. If you can't solve it with words, you're probably going to throw down. Solve it with fisticuffs. Fisticuffs indeed. Yeah. Like a true gentleman. Yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing that makes me uh makes me wear two monocles. Uh <laughs> 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 Yeah, what was that about lowering the the stream quality? <laughs> I don't think. Look, that's what I'm here for. I mean, my internet goes out, and I can make you. I can I can easily drop both of you simultaneously. This is my skill. Like I'm not good at guitar, but I can drop both of you at least five points per minute in IQ. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. Womp womp. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So okay. Um... You basically just described, uh, as far as like when I referred to violence, you described man's uh, primal instinct to conquer and, you know, and take over kind of thing. Like, it's like, it's just kind of like animals, like, like, like dogs, for example, they, they piss on things. That's mine now. Oh, you don't like it? Okay, let's fight. Like, that's, that's primal instinct for anybody, right? Not even just men, you know, like. Yeah. So it's kind of a kind of a vague men and beast alike. <laughs> I mean, if you um, there's a you know he uh, Jordan Peterson's an excellent um, psychologist. I've been watching his lectures on. He always talks about hierarchical structures, and that's something that he touches on all the time. Is that humans are no different than animals, and that our brains are wired to have that hierarchical that hierarchical response whenever it comes to um, living in social groups. So 
you know, he, he, his, his example was with lobsters just to show you that like, it's, it's, so it's can be extremely far removed from human social groups and still have the exact same ultimate outcome of the, there is always going to be the, um, the, the subordinate and then the dominant and, you know, among males, it's really no different. Sure. I mean, it's just kind of like how we, how we interact with each other and how we, how we set boundaries and, and everything else. So, I mean, it's really not, it's not that much different, but I mean, in, in present day climate, it becomes extremely difficult to try to explain to people that this is actually normal behavior. And they're like, Oh my God, he's always fighting. Yeah. Well, that's, that's he's the dude. thing. It's he's like, a dude. He's a, he's a guy. <laughs> he does guy things. <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> well, okay, so we'll, we'll touch on that again in here in a minute, but let me ask you this. Why are we talking about masculinity? I mean, you, you, you touched on it briefly as far as the today's social climate, but why, why is it a thing that we want to talk about tonight? What, what do you think brought it along? Gillette fucking sucks. <laughs> Tell me about that. I didn't get to see the video. I didn't have time today. Tell me all about it. Is, it is. You don't have time to watch a two-minute video, Neil. Oh, look, look who's fucking talking, Mr. TLDR. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I can, can you break it down into a vine for me? Yeah, I need... I'm sorry, it's TikTok now? It's not Vine. Oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, 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 okay. Uncultured, uncultured, Paul. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, so basically, in this in this Gillette ad, um, it starts out, and the, the, I guess the, the the Gillette byline up until this point has been um, uh, the best a man can get. Uh, was it? Is that what it is? Yeah, best a man yeah. can get. Yeah. What's the? What is? The, how do they? Razor. How do they flip it? How do they? I can't remember because they changed it. Oh, the, oh, is this the best a man can be? Yeah. Is this the best a man can be? Yeah, so then it shows, you know, it shows older men getting ready to shave, and then they have like this look of co- like deep contemplation, <clears throat> and it has two boys fucking each other up in the backyard. All those pe- two dudes are like having a barbecue, and they're looking at him, going, "Boys will be boys," and you know, it's it's so it's so vile and terrible. There's like a masculine. big old line of them just repeating, "Boys will be boys," over and over and over again. Yeah. And, and then there's like a bunch of these ass, these asshole street urchins are chasing Oliver Twist down, right? And he's got a big old knapsack and his <laughs> his his fucking nappy dreads, and they're gonna beat the shit out of him right next to a bank, which is weird, but I'll take it because I imagine that this is both symbolism of anti male and it's also anti capitalism because fuck banks, right? And then all the little kids they came out and they all put their Antifa masks on, they just beat the shit out of this kid, and he got the MAGA hat on. They started like throwing fucking pipe bombs everywhere. It was complete anarchy. And they're you know, all that's seeing- bullshit. They're Indians. Yeah, beating they're the Indians beating a drum somewhere. You know that was all bullshit if you actually bothered to watch the video, but you didn't. But no, so these kids, these kids try to beat the shit out of this kid, and then it has a dude go stop it because they're gonna beat the shit out of this kid in the middle of the street, and he's like, "Hey, we don't do that." And I'm like, "Well, I mean, literally everyone here, you are the one person who decided to stop that." I think if really, if you want to break it down, I think that our problems, if that's the case, our problems are much more broad than uh, boys will be boys. You know what? Because like there's like fucking like two hundred people watch this kid get the shit like pushed in him, and he's fucking. Everyone's like, "Well, not my problem." You know, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm if you don't see it, right it happen, now. I'm gonna do it right now. It's only a minute and a half. Put it on, put it on the stream. Put it on the stream. I don't think I can. Put it on the stream. I think you, you are can. the worst. It's it's a a plan more rad and not a oh, wow. no, I don't want to like watch somebody's view of it. I just want to watch the video. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god no i i actually watched it and and i didn't really care all that much except for that like i wasn't really thrilled with like the um i guess the implication um this Holy rather uh strong action. feminist feels like she knows what men should be Is like more than what can get? like men know what men should be like and it reminds me of those comedians that Is i always it? joke about like not knowing what women are thinking and how it, it's like well you know you d- we don't know what you're thinking any more than you know what the fuck we're thinking. I mean, I know that everyone jokes about like men aren't that complicated, but like whenever it comes to like actually um, dis- overt displays of both masculinity and and in the rearing of children, I mean we're we're infinitely complicated because there's there are precepts of morals that have been passed on generation upon generation upon generation that do rely on boys acting out. And, and establishing that the the yeah, physical limits of hierarchy. So I mean, like in the backyard scene, there's the kids that are fighting. They're not really fucking fighting. 
I mean, that's that's um what's been what can be described as rough and tumble play, where like they learn the limits of both what they can do and can't do, and like what the limits of their bodies, and then the establishment of hierarchy, and then you know, but then the difference is like these kids that are beating the shit out of each other in the street. That's totally different. So I mean, like if you have two little bastards fighting in the fucking backyard. They're like, you stole my Voltron. The other kid's like, fuck you, I like my little pony. And then they're really, the one of them breaks a bottle and tries to kill the other one. Now you can stop it. That's when you usually step in. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, but I mean, if these kids are just pushing each other around, like in this video, I mean, like, no, that's, that, that is, because they say boys will be boys. I'm like, no, yeah, that is actually accurate. All right, I mean, so that, is, that is legit. I watched half of it. Um, and then the other half is, hey, this is what we could do to be better. <laughs> Look, okay. So the, what they're. There, there's a couple things I do agree with, and then 99% of it I fucking don't. It's just... So, as far as what they're trying to convey is, is everything that men have always done up until now has been terribly wrong, and uh, you're stupid, and you're tr you're raising your kids wrong, and so on and so forth. Uh, which is just... I mean, you can't... Like, like, like you just said, you can't punish your children for roughhousing. That's what they do. I mean... That's what. That's literally what boys do. I mean, boys like, what are they saying? Yeah, boys will be boys. I mean, like, no, that is actually true. That is actually one hundred percent true. And I don't understand. Like, I don't understand what the confusion for Gillette seems to be. Yeah, not only. I think that. Oh, I was gonna say, like, I do feel like they did have like some points with like the whole like sexual harassment thing or whatever. Yeah. But like, the thing that bothered me, like, the thing that actually bothered me about the entire commercial is, it's like, what does this have to do with a fucking razor? Are you shitting me? Yeah, it's it's honestly like, just. <laughs> pun uh it's honestly just trying to be edgy um ha. <laughs> yeah but but for real though like so the the sexual harassment thing i can understand especially the shit that's going on and they specifically called out terry cruz and his uh situation he's going through which is just awful he's getting a lot of freaking hate from other actors lately uh basically saying uh if i was if i was terry and i had some old white dude grab my dick i would have punched him in the face and then you would have gone to jail and your yeah, career would have been done. And you wouldn't be famous anymore. Yeah. That's a, that's the thing though. That's that is that is the male response. I mean like yeah. and and the the only thing that sucks is that like we've effectively, you know, due to social constraints, we've neutered that response. So I mean like if, you know, in in, in this particular situation, so let's say like a dude comes up and, you know, like just actually absolutely yanks on Terry's crank both literally and figuratively. I mean, he he in in past times a, a dude literally would have probably pulled out his Derringer and plugged that dude right through the chest. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and that would have been a perfectly rational, normal ra male response. I mean, let's put, let's put it back in like the 1840s and like be like, you know, so Terry's at this, this, this big like Opry party and they're like, and some dude comes up and he's like, excellent Johnson, you have that. And then he like grabs his wiener and then, the, then Terry's like, eat God, you fuck. And then just like, <laughs> blows him out of his boots. I mean, and everyone would have been like, my God. You got blood on my trousers, and then you know, aside from like a a brief a brief like cleaning bill, I mean that probably would have been about it. Because then the constable would showed up and like bang us up. We're like, what the fuck's going on here? I'm like, he touched my dick. Oh, well, fuck him then. No. Oh, well, I mean, and then they just probably would have thrown him out the back. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold please. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I guess I'll fucking go die. Sorry, my internet was taking a shit. Anyways, either that or uh, it was just Discord. But anyway, um, super. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. A long time ago, that would have been uh, a violent response would have would have been expected. But the way that Terry saw it was, I'm a gigantic black man, and there's this I'm old punch white this dude, cripple old white dude. Not only will I probably kill him in a single punch, but I'm going to jail afterwards. They're not going to believe a, a strong black man punching an old rich white dude is, you know, in self defense. <laughs> Uh, and my career is going to be over. So, absolutely. If they don't shoot me upon arrival 32 times in the chest. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, absolutely, he did the right thing by, you know, keeping his cool and then going to the police. But, you know, he's getting so much shit for that, especially from people in the but black community. didn't he not go to the police? He didn't did. he just, like, wait until fucking, like, the Me Too garbage started? No, he did. No, he went, and they, oh, okay. like, basically they... turned a deaf ear to it. They are like, yeah, okay. He did like so within little, like why you grab your dick? Yeah, okay. Mr. Cruz. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but once sure. the Me Too movement happened, he spoke up again. Yeah. That's the thing about uh about the I guess like the double standard when it comes to sexual harassment between um 
the double the double standard between uh, sexual harassment between men and women because like you have women where it's like you're you're, you're expected to believe them come hell or high water mm-hmm. right. i mean a woman a woman would never lie about like something that happened to her sexually my god man but i mean a man it's like well fucking deal with it yeah exactly well, like, you know, like so i don't like to grab your dick it's like shut the fuck up who cares i mean yeah. so i grabbed your dick okay and you know i mean like i mean that's that's the that's a general the general view on it i mean like and then you know let's let's also take into into account like this particular way whenever they talk about um you know young men being sexually abused by you know teachers or or um female like female neighbors or whatever and then you know most dudes are like what's the problem but like it's sexual assault i mean literally no matter how you spin it but then you know but the 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 social the social uh understanding is that you should pretty much leave her a fiver on the nightstand and then just leave yeah yeah and and it's like (laughs) there's absolutely some things that need to change and i think we are going in the right direction with a lot of it but i think we're taking a little too far in in many aspects i mean there's been a few comedians that come out and a few uh influential people that come out and say hey i think we're taking it a little too far um and they just get buried in the media not, not not necessarily buried like not heard but people just tear them to shreds oh yeah you're a you're a sympathizer you're you're probably a rapist too and shit like that you definitely and, rape people well well yeah. sure because yeah. i mean what they really want is they don't because you know it's the whole thing with this gillette i mean like they're not they're not they don't give a shit about men they don't give a shit about boys issues they don't give a shit about you know if you should treat your kids right and you should raise them right that's not what this fucking thing's about it's about them jumping on the the fucking more vir- the virtue signaling man wagon mm-hmm. and trying to be like look at look at how progressive we are i mean you By take way, your progressive politics and shove them up your fucking ass and then you can make a goddamn uh ad about me you trying to get me the fuck out of your asshole about it. <laughs> the funny thing about it is that i mean you know, the, the old saying is like any type of publicity, positive or negative, is still publicity. That video has almost double the dislikes and it does likes on it. Right. Well, sure, because because here's the thing. I mean, it's just like a lot of these these idiot Democrats that are coming out. They, they're they banking really hard on people being pro- like like super hardcore radical progressives. And practically fucking nobody is like that. It's just a vocal majority or a vocal minority. And people are like, we should make a commercial about that and really like, really showcase some of these issues. And it'll be great for uh, for our sales revenue. And then they actually <coughs> make it. They're like, OK, well, people fucking hate this video. But here's the worst part. Gillette's stock still went up. So it didn't really matter. It, literally nothing changed. It's just like Nike. Nike got fucking shredded over the um, Colin Kaepernick garbage that they did oh, because yeah. it's absolutely terrible and underhanded. And I was genuinely hoping that Nike would have gone down in an absolute flaming heap of dog shit and cool. their stocks went up. Yep. So, I mean, it didn't make any difference. I mean, no matter how no matter how reprehensible their their faux moral virtue signaling was, I it just it was the absolute worst thing I've ever seen. I agree, and you think about it like like it or, or hate it, agree with it or disagree with it. When it comes to these issues, these people are making money hand over fist by just riding the social wave. Basically, all they're doing is jumping on that bandwagon and saying, "Hey, this is a hot topic right now. Let's take a stance on it." Doesn't matter which stance you take, just take a stance on it. And yeah, I mean. You know, you well, you ride the wave and sales go up. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to fucking mean it. Like, you're not donating to charities and shit that have something to do with uh, the causes. You're just like, let me put out a 90-second ad, you know? Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, Neil. It is a short film as they have uh, which is the dumbest oh my god is there any is there any more is there any more sjw buzzwordy <laughs> garbage than calling a commercial a short film get the fuck out of here i mean like this this they call it they called her a director and i'm like you're like a director of marketing maybe Did you make commercials <laughs> oh yeah you make commercials i mean like i understand that commercials need to be directed don't get me wrong but i mean like don't 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 fucking get off on calling yourself a, a short film director it's a, it's a hundred, over here <laughs> yeah, it's like 90 seconds. It's 90 second it's 90 second propaganda. 90 second anti-male propaganda. I mean like there's literally nothing else. And the rest of her her absolute dreadful uh since she's a director, let's call it a cinematography. <laughs> <laughs> Her, uh, yeah, her cinematography laurels were all like, you know, stupid shit. Like a, well, a it was brief, all like, shitting on men and stuff. Yeah, like, a, short, a short, a short film, a short film about the uh, the virtues of the vulva. I'm like, yeah, I like pussy too. Can I be in your next commercial? 
<laughs> I too enjoy a vagina. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I, I also would like to partake partake in the uh, the moisten cloaca uh, buzz fest. Can we do that? <laughs> I know cloacas are butt stuff, but that's fine. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just mailing it up. All right, so so let me let me <laughs> ask you this. Man. Let's 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 pivot here because we're just getting on a getting on a rant here about how much we hate that ad. We all agree. I don't necessarily it's... hate it. I just think that it's absolute a shit platform to really like go out on there. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, I think cat calling is like super trashy. I do think that like you know, raise your kids to not be little assholes. And like, if you see somebody getting bullied, like stand up for them. Don't be like everybody else and just fucking turn your head. But it doesn't need to be in a fucking Gillette ad. Like, are you and, fucking kidding me? And, like, and really, and really, these are these are things. These are these are moral virtues that. We're taught. I don't know about you guys, but they, I mean, like to me, I watched that commercial. I went, well, yeah, yeah. and it, is, it weirds me out. Normal. Yeah, I mean, it weirds me out that like it even needs to be said. I mean, and the worst part is that like things that I that I also view as being not particularly destructive behavior in that are being lauded as a destructive behavior, and I'm like, I don't, yeah. I don't understand. Also, like the the shit with the um, uh, I, I know you said you're gonna try to like pivot, okay, but, but the, the shit with the uh, in the boardroom. Where she, what she means to say is, I've literally never. Maybe it's because I work in a in a maverick line where the women that I work with are fucking tough as shit, and they've spent a lot of time like actually out in the oil fields. So I mean, like they don't tend to take shit like that very easily. No. So I mean, I've nowhere. never, I've never seen that ever happen. I've, I've never seen anyone do that. I've been in many boardrooms and during many meetings and. Saying shit like that will get you called out in a heartbeat. It doesn't matter. You would yeah. get canned so fucking fast. You wouldn't get canned. Yeah. It would just be, look, you're kind of coming off like a dick. Don't do that again. Apologize and let's move on. But it would it would never be just like, oh, it's just the way they are. Men will be men. You know, no. Men will be men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that doesn't horrible. happen. No, no, it would be a fucking HR visit in a heartbeat. And that's all there hey. is to it. If they don't oh. screw you out with pitchforks and shit first, like yeah, I mean, like where I, where I work, I mean, like the the lady that I work with, I mean, she's she's kind of like old right away, so I mean, like she 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 her first jobs were actually out in the oil fields in in North Dakota, so I mean, like this she she was what we commonly refer to as one bad bitch. So I mean, like you know, if you were like you're like, well, I'm sorry, what she really means to say is she go, I'm sorry, when did you get the right to fucking talk for me? Exactly. <laughs> and then she'd be up in your face in the fucking board meeting and and be like, say it again, say me, say what I'm thinking one more fucking time. Yeah. And and everyone would be like, just you know, oh my god, she's gonna kill him. <laughs> I'm, I'm right so sorry. Him. But yeah, that's okay. So let, let's let's do what I was gonna do here. Um. So. As far as um, masculinity is concerned, like uh, obviously the, the the phrase toxic masculinity infers it's a terrible thing, and it's it is a terrible thing. How, however, what's what's the limit? I mean, how what how can you be masculine but not be too masculine? Here's the thing that I hate, and I hate and I hate passionately the phrase toxic masculinity because okay. what the fuck does that what the fuck does that mean i mean what what exactly would you would you identify as being toxically masculine because there's a difference between you know so i mean like if you're just being an asshole aren't you just being an asshole it has nothing to do with masculine or feminine traits it has everything to do with you just having like an absolutely dog shit personality i mean like so then like being a man has fucking literally almost nothing to do with it any more than a woman who's just being mean as hell has anything to do with her being a woman. It's just her being mean as hell. So what the hell does does toxic masculinity even mean? I mean, it's it's a nonsensical buzzword. That's a really good point. Te- technically, if you Google it, it says that it, it it is a practice that legitimizes powerful men's dominant position in society and justifies the subordination of the common male population and women and other marginalized ways of being a man. That's basically what it says. So it doesn't mean that's a, that's a that's a nonsensical that's, answer. That means so, nothing. Okay, so what it means to me, what what <clears> I'm <throat> what I'm deciphering it as is uh, basically being overly alpha, being too much man. But that's just being an a asshole. Man. I mean, that, <laughs> because you can just be an asshole. It has nothing to do with your masculinity. It's just that you have an overbearing personality. And do you know what the technical term for being having an overbearing personality is? 
Ass having a fucking asshole. overbearing personality and just being a dick. <laughs> so, I mean, like, toxic masculinity literally means nothing. So, I'm, I'm going to read the Urban Dictionary definition. So, give me just one second. Okay. Toxic masculinity okay. is defined as Urban Dictionary. I know, it's just the absolute most reputable <laughs> source. Uh, a social science term that describes narrow, repressive type of ideas about the male gender role that defines masculinity as exaggerated masculine traits like being violent, unemotional, sexually aggressive, and so forth. Also suggests that men who act too emotional or maybe aren't uh god get out of here uh maybe aren't violent enough or don't do all of the things that real men do and get their man card taken away that is literally the most retarded answer i've ever heard in my life like you know like eating steak and hanging sheetrock in the garage so let's talk about let's talk about like i just want to break it down like some of these supposed definitions because i mean basically like you know your 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 everyday feminist is going to pretty much go by urban dictionary anyway because they're social they're so they're social creatures so this is pretty much their shit right here um the masculine traits like being violent unemotional sexually aggressive and so forth violent i mean that's just men that's that's the because like i said there's always like there's always the threat of violence when it comes between two people especially two men in a room or in a situation where there's going to be uh, any kind of disagreement. There's always the underlying threat of sexual violence or sexual violence. (laughs) Depending on if I'm in the room or not. Listen, listen, (laughs) let's, let's not turn this rape into a murder. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, but there's always that underlying threat of violence. There always is. I mean, between two men, even like, even like among friends, you know, like if you like start getting really heated, and the, like you, your argument no longer has any real value other than like you know no you're stupid no you're stupid there's a, there's there's that there's that all uh, obvious es- potential escalation to violence so un- being unemotional or sexually aggressive <clears throat> men are just going to always be sexually aggressive I mean that's just kind of the way that men are genetically built I mean and, that literally goes for any male and pretty much. The entire animal kingdom ever. Yeah, like. every male of every phylum of every kingdom of every of every species ever. I mean, since the beginning of time. I, I mean, mean, that's just how it is. Here's, here's, that's here's my how we ex- like. So, I get what they're saying. I've experienced it plenty of times myself. I, I I can't explain to you how annoying it is to have several dudes in a group. And all they ever want to talk about is pussy and how if you don't like the way that one looks and you're gay and shit like that. I mean, I've experienced that myself, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's exclusive to the male gender. I mean, I've hung out with a group of women that were just as disgusting, you know? And it's like, can we talk about something else? Oh, look at that can, guy. Can we stop talking about vaginas? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> grossing me out, guys. <laughs> like, Seriously. I mean, but no, I, I, you know, I get what they're trying to 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 portray but at the same time it's not exclusive to men women are gross like, too realistically though it's something that like society as a whole needs because like if you don't have like masculine traits i mean that even goes for something as like being like an entrepreneur like if you're not aggressive and you don't take like steps to basically advance etc like you're not going to go anywhere it's like it's the same it's the same thing across the board like if we didn't have that where would we be we'd be nowhere because we wouldn't you'd be like tibet yeah we wouldn't we wouldn't have america god damn it well no you wouldn't the way i see it is is oh go ahead chair i was just gonna say like i mean it's it's just like with without that without that mentality like even like the slightest bit like you would go nowhere like if you were just some passive just like floating fucking plastic bag in the universe like Everyone would shit all over you. Well, not only that, but it's a. This is what I was gonna say. It's a combination of. I don't. Women want one thing, but they also want the exact opposite at the same, at the same point. But men want it the same way. It's like you can't decide what you want. Women want a strong man, you know. Women want somebody that can protect them, but at the same time, they don't want no man to try and control their life. And it's like, dude, every woman. <laughs> has their own preferences you can't just group yourselves together and say you know i want my my men to be passive and uh i want them to uh send me a note a very hand nicely handwritten note that says very nice things about me without talking about my my bits i want you to tell me how you like my personality and no listen this is what these comedians are talking about this is what these these people are talking about we're gonna get to a point where nobody's gonna talk to anybody Ever again, 
I'm not going to talk. Sounds like heaven. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to talk to the opposite sex because I don't want to go to fucking HR today, or vice right. versa. And it's like you're, and I hate to, I hate to lump it all into one word, but you're all a bunch of fucking buzzkills. All right, like just stop. <laughs> like I get it. Some people take it way too fucking far. Those people should be punished, and those people should be stopped, and they need to be reeducated on hey. Maybe you shouldn't try and lift that chick skirt, okay? But like, like who fucking needs to like? Who <laughs> needs to have that explained to him? I mean, who yeah. in the workforce is like is like, hey, watch this, dude. I'm a fucking Debbie's not gonna mind. I'm gonna get a big old fucking feel. <laughs> and then next thing you know, like wee woo wee woo. I mean, like what? Like who thinks that? I mean, I again, I've literally never encountered that in my life. No, I'm... like in my life, like like workplace, non workplace anywhere i've never experienced that i have actually i've experienced it yeah i've, I've experienced it so I've there's there's so many it. i've, I've actually... anytime i've been around frank he always tries to lift up my skirt <laughs> well it's i mean kilt. that's a given <laughs> no it's definitely a skirt <laughs> but no honestly like i've i've encountered several men that are just like like we'll, we'll go out, like they're usually salesmen okay I'll, I'll narrow it down a little bit but we go out <laughs> we go out to lunch and it's like i always come to this place because they have the hottest waitresses and then you just the fucking waitress comes up and like, hey, Dylan, how you doing today? Like, just they're just creepy as fuck. And if somebody needs I, to tell them, because generally, generally they're nice people. They're they're good people. They they have you know a well structured family, minus their fucking flirting with the waitress <laughs> and shit. And hey, they take hey, care sweetie. of their business, but they can't just not sexually harass waitresses and shit. So it's I think those types of people. It's just like, look, dude, that's not okay. Can can you not? <laughs> please <laughs> yeah okay okay if you put it in that context then yeah i mean like i've had i've had i i went out to at one time where like i went i was asked to go after i had fixed a bunch of shit at work a guy was the guy the manager was like hey let's go out for drinks it's right around the corner i'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> and then so like I, I i grudgingly went and then he made it the worst possible experience you could imagine and i i Let's let's put it let's put it into into full context. I worked in Southern Louisiana. Southern Louisiana is about sixty percent black, and this bar, particular bar was was ra- ringing it ringing it right up there. And so I walked. I don't think anything about it because I don't think anything about it because I don't care about people. And until, until all of a sudden he stands up, he's not even had a drop to drink yet. Points at the t- CNN TV and screams in the loudest possible voice. There is an N word on my TV. Get that N word off my TV. And I just, I'm like, super. Yeah. I gotta and go. He, <laughs> like, I, all, and like, literally the whole place just got dead silent, like, you know, like crickets type silent. And then I turn around and look, and like, pretty much everyone but us is black there. I'm like, super awesome. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely not with him. So <laughs> if you guys want to start like fucking him up, I will leave. Feel free. But then he also, you know, he starts in on the waitress and, and the waitress is like, yeah, well, you know, I can't give you beer because I'm 16. And then he just, the shit he said to her, I, I, I'm like, I, I have to go. <laughs> Look, you know, was it? They say 15 to get you 20. So, I mean, like, you're pretty much, you're pretty much right there. And I got to go. Who behaves like that? Who thinks that's okay? I've, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just be, maybe, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just a sheltered little baby boy. But like, whenever like I go out to a restaurant, I literally say, "Please, thank you, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am," and then that's it. Or well, yes, sir, like, no, sir. I, I, yeah. That's all I do. I never, I never. I, hell, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm too affluent for my own good because I, I sometimes I don't even look at the waiter or waitress. I can't I, even tell you what they look like. <laughs> but like, I don't think a lot of that has anything to do with like masculinity or toxic masculinity or anything like that. I think that's just like manners like it's just being a dick i mean like, and like that's the thing that's that's how men that but that's that's the thing about like how you know men the way men interact with each other especially father to son like if it was if it if it was my dad even if like if i was the as old as that guy say like mid 40s and my dad is still around and he got he, he was there with me and i said something like that to tell that waitress or the about that tv my dad be like boy you need to go outside for a minute <laughs> and then he would whip my ass up and down the fucking street <laughs> And that goes back to the, you know, the answer ultimately will be fucking violence. Sure. Because y'all being a dick, I'm going to fuck you up for it. <laughs> I mean, like, this is what it boils down to. But yeah, oh, I raised you better. But here's the thing. Yeah, is, exactly. Is those types of guys are what this shit is targeting, but it's not, though. 
They're targeting. The thing is, like, they're they're targeting oh. those types of guys, but at the same time, they're saying all men are like that, which is bullshit. Yeah, that, uh, they're generalizing that's the, it. Yeah, that's the that's the feminist dogma chain right there. I mean, and and the thing that really kind of really kind of uh, <laughs> pisses me off about like the whole thing is that. You know, basically what they're saying is like, you know, you guys need to cheat. You guys need to make your boys like to basically act more like girls and to where like, you know, solve, solve all your problems whenever they're kids with with words and play nice. to That's not how men fucking work. That's just not how men work, especially whenever they're kids. I mean, my son's trying to fucking fight everyone right now. And you know what? I let his narrow little ass get beat it's cause you don't, because that's how he's, he's going to learn. It's because you don't <laughs> let him listen to kids, Bob. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. It's it's uh, today's pop songs, but sung by kids. Okay, yeah, I don't care. But anyway, so like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't know if I could be more dismissive. Um, <laughs> Listen, but, oh, hold on, hold on. Side note story. <laughs> oh, good. So um, we let Russell listen to whatever we're listening to at any given time, and uh, the uh, sperm donor comes to pick him up, and. Uh, he asks, "Hey, do you do you let Russell listen to Kids Bop?" I'm like, "No, we don't own a single fucking Kids Bop album, and we would never <laughs> because that's stupid." And he's like, "Oh, that that makes a lot of sense, actually." What what <laughs> do you does that mean? What, are, what are you trying to say there? Uh... Well, he came home the other day saying, uh, "Fuck the police, <laughs> fuck fuck the police," <laughs> and uh, I was just a little concerned. I mean. <laughs> Sorry. Go Anyways, on. go ahead, Frank. Uh, that was, that was just uh, that was that it. Was that it? Yeah, it's just a it's a joke. Was that your story? Was that your story? Any, any uh, failure in parenting is because uh, we didn't let him listen to Kids Bop. So I listen oh, to Kids okay. Bop when I'm working out at the gym. Is that weird? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just it, it, it's not just the Kids Bop that makes it weird. It's the uh, the shirt that's two sizes too small, and <laughs> that like you know you got that you got that wig with the the braids in it. I mean that 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 does kind of seal the deal on being weird. Is it the wig? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm I mean, uh, you know, you go you go to the gym cosplaying as a six year old girl definitely concerns me. I think everyone around you. Oh, Fuck, I'm, I'm out there to impress them. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many Barbies I can bench now. <laughs> you just wait. I'll be the next BuzzFeed article you'll see. This six year old man. Not anymore. Fucking BuzzFeed's just lost like 500 employees. Oh, Fuck BuzzFeed. Man, they need to go away. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, I, you know, like I don't want people to lose their jobs, but if there's any outlet I would love to see go after Gawker, it would be BuzzFeed. Yeah, I mean, that was what? What was it that? Okay, this is a tangent. Don't care. What was it that they uh, did? It was um, oh, they released that thing about uh, it was the Mueller investigation, right? Yeah, they they said that you know. What was it fucking Trump like absolutely had it? Oh no, he Trump he they said that Trump told Cohen to lie for him. Yeah. To to Congress. And and then and Bueller like was like like look, I know we I look media, I know we haven't talked in like years at this point. Um, but I wanna let you guys know BuzzFeed's fucking super duper lying. <laughs> yeah. None of us said any of that shit. <laughs> that yeah, is all none peace. Of this, none of this took place. <laughs> Yeah. Number good. seven, we'll shock you. Mm, good. Fuck <laughs> God, oh my God, that's how he should have fucking released this thing. He should have gone point by point, but like the, the head of the article should have been like, you know, the buzz the reports from BuzzFeed were not correct. Number seven will shock you. <laughs> oh my God, that would have been so funny. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Oh God, Mueller, get with me. PR, I got you, baby. <laughs> oh, that so Just good. send us an email. We've got our email below. Yeah, we've got we got our email below, and I promise I won't delete all of them. He's got a, he's got a private server. I got a private server where I store all my emails. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It just happens to be in Moscow. Listen, so this is all boiling down to basically. I get what they're trying to say, you know, the feminist movement and all that shit. I get what they're trying to it's say. It's garbage. It's the worst. Listen, listen I'm not going to generalize. Okay. Because that's what they're. Doing. I will. Feminism is absolutely the worst thing that's ever happened. It, that's, this new wave feminism is total dog shit. It's not. Like I said, I'm not going to generalize. They are trying to put out a message. Their message is generalizing. Wrong. <laughs> it's wrong, and it's and it's stupid. Uh, as far as um, 
as far as what the goal is, basically, it sounds like they want flirting to stop altogether. They want to outlaw flirting, if possible. And then on top of that, they want men to just die. There's a lot of them that just want men to die in general, right? Like they've come that, out. That's said, a, that's been that's been kind of a big thing. I mean, like it's a it's a I guess what you call it a minority of the minority movement. Yeah. Uh, that they call for the um, kill all men. It's the funniest part. It's funny as hell too because like these feminists are like, well, whenever we say kill all men, we don't really mean that we want men to actually die. And I'm like, really? Because you have a sign written in blood with a knife on it that says kill all men. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting. I feel like the message is actually pretty clear. What, I'm going to be honest this? with you. What is this Islam? I mean, <laughs> I fucking ain't no, I, like, I ain't no like grade A in dictionary, but I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh what? no, we're getting shut down now. You can't say that, Jerry. <laughs> Why not? Hey, Frank That's true, last, though. Frank said it last week. I can get away with it. That is true. That is true. I did say it last week because you know, contextually, doing... it's correct. Contextually, it's correct. I mean, uh, that's that's the that's the whole idea of intersectionality is that apparently feminism and and Islam go hand in hand. There's actually a very interesting um, discussion uh, about it, where like the uh, the theory is that um, women are duplicitous in nature. Uh, sorry, feminists are duplicitous in nature, where they absolutely want no men at all ever. They want nothing to do with any men, and th- but at the same time, they ally themselves with shit like Islam, which is demonstrably vile in the treatment of women and is what you actually is probably the closest approximation that you could actually find to true toxic masculinity, true toxic masculinity. Um, and then, and feminists are like, you know, yeah, we in Islam, we have a lot in common. I'm like, really? That's who you, that, that's where you're going to draw the line. You're going to go with that. What? I mean, and, and it, it, it's been an interesting, um, <clears throat> discussion because they say like you know so so in the west women are pushing away this this concept of of masculinity of like you know the 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 man who who uh, pulls you know opens the door for women and who uh tries to provide for his family and tries to raise his kids correctly and be and always be there and then be supporting and they're like that's you know that's to- toxic masculinity uh, you know but islam's really nailed it and i'm like they they fucking throw you off a building if you're fucking like if you but if you fuck fuck they fucking throw you off a building. I mean, like, I don't even understand. How is this even a thing? Aren't they about, like, <laughs> genital mutilation, too, when it comes to women? Yeah, general, yeah. general mutilation. Um, selling women um, for, for not, not for prostitution, but, you know, let them get married at age nine. Yeah. Uh, fucking, I mean, like, you know, they, they, they say that wearing the burqa is liberating. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure that's what a lot of people who went to jail. I'm sure that's what DMX probably thought. And they're like, oh, going to jail for fucking tax evasion is so liberating. You know, being being covered for the next fucking ten years is absolutely the best. But, Super. Okay, so uh, okay, okay, hold on. That just like what you just said just blows my fucking mind. I mean, <laughs> so they do though. So, so I mean, it's, it's this intersectionality. I mean, like, I if if you get a chance to anyone who's listening, if you get a chance to look up on intersectionality, it was it was a study that was done. I can't remember the professor's name, but it came out of UC Berkeley in California. She said that basically. You, what you need to do in order to have any kind of um, movement is that if you're going to say, let's just say, for example, feminism, feminism, you need to look at. So the, the, it's the idea that so say you're a feminist and you're a woman. So you're 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 already that's your that's your one victimhood status is woman. And then your next victimhood status is, OK, I'm going to be you know, it's it's a it's a uh, I'm a I'm a brown woman. Like, OK, well, you know, so then you're so then your victimhood status, this this woman's victimhood status is two levels higher or is two levels higher than yours. So she is much more oppressed than you are, making her the uh, the most oppressed out of the two of you. But then I say like there's like a woman who is who is a who is a, a brown trans woman. So now that's three levels of of the of the victimhood chain that now you need to observe in in this and then so that's i mean and, and all this intersectionality basically boils down to the idea of like we want men to be more like women actually no let's just not have men at all and then okay but then what are you really looking for you know because because it was what's so fascinating is that if you, there's an article that was done by um i can't remember if it was washington uh washington um post. oh god help me thank you washington post or huffington post Maybe that's why i got fucked up because i thought they're the same thing um but uh they're talking about talking to feminists about men they want to date and they said that they would never date a male feminist because they're fucking too effeminate they want a man <laughs> they want a man fucking explain that to me explain that to me i don't understand it is it, it, is, it is documented that women mm. like men if they're gonna date a man they're gonna be a man 
I mean, and they don't because they don't want these male feminists. First of all, because most male feminists tend to have criminal records and try to like really kind of sexually abuse people, which is just fucking magic. Uh, it was like these are the people that you associate yourself with. It's incredible. Just like you know how like you have male feminists and then you have um, the the Islam's like oh great nailed it, and then so. Then, then it's like okay, so you're what you're looking for is you're looking for that. Like, oh no, we don't want that. We want a, we want a man because we want someone that we can you know stand side by side with. I'm like, what are you even <laughs> fighting for? <laughs> we can you protect want? us and care for us. <laughs> like, goddamn. I mean, like, so what you're asking for is for the dating pool to grow, <laughs> but you're gonna but you're gonna demonize anyone that tries to. The fuck are you on? I want you to lower the male standard to be to where my level is acceptable. Please yeah. and thank you. Exactly. I mean, and like, there's, um, you know, there's a, uh, and I, I mentioned it earlier, but Jordan Peterson writes a book called uh, Twelve Rules for Life, and one of the one of the lines in it is basically about, you know, trying to be a better you, and it's and it, and it can apply to anyone, but you know, it resonates at the moment most strongly with with young men because young men have been rather substantially demonized in our day and age. So a lot of men are having uh, the, you know, we talked about it last week where they're experiencing substantial amounts of nihilism and they're, they're basically being told that you don't matter. You're a terrible person all the time. And this is shit that I'm afraid of for like my son, because I mean, he's a, he's an absolutely bright, sweet little boy. Same thing with Russell, you know, and I don't want people telling him, well, you're a terrible person. Just you know, you're a terrible person. Penis. Just because you're a man, I mean, right. you're gonna go up and you're gonna abuse people, and you know, and it's just it's just gonna be how it's gonna be. Like, no, 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 you don't get to tell him that because it's not fucking true. And but there's there but anyway. So the Twelve Rules of Life is like is, is very it's a very very good book. I highly recommend anybody read it because it's it's very eye opening as as far as um uh shit that I already heard whenever I was a kid. So like if you weren't if you basically if you weren't raised uh, with these rules, it helps you to kind of like formulate a good stepping process in your life to make you a better you uh like i said anyone can use it it just resonates stronger with with young men but um oh my god i lost my train of thought completely because i started talking about my son um damn it oh god damn it i hate losing my train of thought frank's got yeah. poo brain mm-hmm. that's what happens there right i i think faster than than i should be i'm like up in space uh so oh man total rules for life Oh, so one of the things that um, had been had been discussed in the book was to be uh, be desirable by as many women as possible, but only go for one woman. And that just that makes feminists go completely fucking bananas because they're like, well, I mean, no, no man is desirable. I mean, like that, that just sounds horribly sexist. I'm like, why? Why? I don't understand. Why would you think that's sexist? If anything, I think that sounds like a great fucking plan. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like, the, how is that? I don't understand how it's bad, but I mean, like, the, the feminist, the feminist types that make mm-hmm. shit like the Gillette ad that just seek to emasculate, generate, make me nuts because women don't want that. The majority of women. If you went out on the street and you asked 20 women, I'd say like maybe you'd probably get maybe three out of the 20 that'd probably tell you like, you know, yeah, maybe men should really kind of dial it back. Because every woman I've ever talked to was like, I don't understand what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, I I, I ran into the same thing. I I would ask the same question to the the many women that I know. And I'm like, what do you you think about this? Like... (laughs) What? I bet you'd probably even get the same sort of responses if you asked dudes, not more like about like dating women or whatever, but if you asked dudes like, hey, what like qualities do you see in like somebody that you would consider to be like more masculine or to be like a man man or like, you know, like something like that. I feel like you'd get the same sort of like a you'd get the same generalization of like, you know, them would say the same thing versus like the three that might say something a little different. Sure. It's <clears throat> it's it's a hyperbole. It's all it is. And, and when somebody either A is brainwashed or B has had a terrible experience in their life, I can understand why they would feel a little hateful or fearful of men in general, but it's an irrational fear. I mean, the chance, the likeliness of somebody being attacked or somebody have a terrible experience in their life, usually from the opposite sex for whatever reason, is very slim to none. But because it happens to a handful of people, they are so like 
distraught by it that not only do they have to spread the message and tell everybody else how terrible this this one man was to them they take it a step further and say well a lot of men are like this and then a lot of men goes from all men are like this and it's 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 like a, a wildfire and it it, it, I don't know how it's caught on so much. It's it's just like any. Well, like, I can go ahead. I can tell you how it's caught on so much. We have access to like social media and social platforms and like all this stuff where literally the idiots of the entire fucking world can get up on a soapbox and preach this stuff, and it reaches millions of people. People can send out a fucking tweet, and a hundred million people can see it like that. Like yeah, you're absolutely that's right. That's how it spreads. Like that's mm-hmm. literally like. Honestly, I feel like that, like the start of like the downfall and like really like what, like being like a gentleman and like all that other stuff and like all the stuff that people consider like toxic masculinity or whatever, I feel like is kind of starting to go like downhill just because we do have access to like all this social media and all this stuff because it's like it sort of brings out like a lot of the abilities to basically like if you do something and you do something bad, you are more likely to be ostracized for it and get like all this flack because people can basically say like, Hey, this dude showed his dick at an Applebee's like, and you know, like <laughs> millions of people can see it, you know, but I don't know. Like, no, I guess I don't really know where I'm going with that, but it's right, like, yeah. I feel like that right there is kind of like why you start to see more of this stuff. And I feel like that's probably why we're starting to see stuff where people are like, sort of like, demonizing men like in, in general it's just because like you can you can talk about it and everyone can see it it doesn't matter if you're uneducated if you're completely fucking wrong people can see it and because they see it on the internet it has to be true right and and that's one of the problems mm-hmm. that we have right now especially in this country that we have um we have not only social media but but mass media like the actual mainstream media will blow us stuff out of the proportion i mean like they take something small and they make it enormous. I mean, CNN is notorious for just absolutely taking a what would have been more or less a, a common true crime story and then turning it into uh, a class as devastating. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, women women that have had, had things happen to them have every reason in the world to, to be upset about what's happened to them. I mean, a- absolutely. And and the people should be caught, jailed, etc. But I mean, that's not what's happening. What's happening is, is this, um, this, this constant witch hunt that is never going to be enough. It's never going to stop. And now, what do you think? Okay, so I want to ask you guys this on the heels of that. Uh, I, I know I'm not host, sorry. But like, let's just, because since we're talking about mass media and sensationalism, what do you think about this uh, this movement, uh, this this bill for uh, gender equality? Have you have you seen anything on this? Just, I haven't. Just basically what you and I have talked about. Uh, I didn't actually do any research on it, but based on what, I can believe uh, is it wasn't like Gwyneth Paltrow like a, a like a big speaker on it or something like that. Yeah, okay. Gwen, well, uh, Patricia Arquette and uh, Alyssa Milano have been the two most vocal. It would not surprise me if Gwyneth Paltrow uh, was in on it as well because that's kind of like you know getting into fucking other people's business is pretty much a celebrity's main job now. It's not just acting anymore. Specifically hers. Uh, I mean, she's up in everybody's yeah. shit. Um, yeah, I, I I think. What they're trying to get at is, and they're still talking about this. It's the the wage gap, the wage inequality. Is is that what they're touching on, basically, or is it just no? no here's general? what here's here's what they here's what they say. Men and women have never been equal. They don't have equal rights. It's time that we finally amend the Constitution so that men and women can finally have equal rights. I mean, like what? And this is this you want you want to see a feminist fucking hair catch on fire fast? I mean, you just go you know, they say, you know, men and women don't have the same rights. I don't have the same rights that you have. And you go like what? And then just watch uh, them fucking uh, internally combust uh, because they because there's no look spoilers for anyone who is confused. Women have every right that you do there. In fact, one could actually say if you put social rights into it, they probably have more fucking rights than you do. If you're a man, I mean, there is no right on this uh, in this country that a man has has that a woman, woman doesn't so like what are you talking about and if they're talking about the wage gap i i will i will just i i will hy- i will hyperbolically throw myself off a fucking roof I'm not actually gonna do it because i love myself a lot but i mean like you know i will a metaphysical me will definitely be tossed off of a building and I, it annoys me it's terribly and anytime that like anytime i see women go oh but that wage gap i just want to fucking fight them i just want to fight them in the street i mean but i won't because they're a woman, and I'll win. Well, here, here's what. I, 
so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> there goes all our credibility, Frank. Fuck. <laughs> Well, here's you want to be treated like a man? Meet you out in the fucking street. Here's how I see it. I I understand why they think the way they they do, but I think that their intentions are on a much larger scale than it needs to be. There's plenty of isolated situations of inequality, such as the wage wage gap, such as um, just chauvinism in general. But like I said before, it goes both ways. It's just isolated. It's just men generally don't make a big fucking fuss about it they if 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 there's like a company for example and i can give you first-hand experience when i worked as a medical records clerk it was five dudes and about 75 women guess mm-hmm. who got catcalled all the time the five dudes by yeah. women guess who got treated shittily the five dudes and it doesn't matter it all all that matters is that you chose a job that's primarily run by women now you can stick with it and if it's so terrible for you to get you know hit on all the time by women uh then find a new job i mean you're in a you're in a field surrounded by a whole lot of estrogen so find a new job it's not like here's 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 the thing uh like if so i i agree with you as a man i agree with you say that to a woman well yeah it's not. Good. I mean, like they're they're fucking again. Their hair would fucking catch on fire. Their skin would peel back from their skull, and they would sing Hold the on. song that ends Hold the on. world. I I will correct you in saying because I'm not gonna just. I wouldn't say that to just any woman because any woman that would that would receive that most of them, women would agree. <laughs> the very it's true very vocal minority would yes lose their shit. Oh, you should be able to do as much as a woman can, and vice versa. Or women should. We should be able to vote. Yeah. <laughs> when we're gonna get the goddamn vote but, out of my country <laughs> but that's that's the way it was like this was one of my first jobs i had and it was i mean i actually enjoyed the cat calling spoiler alert <laughs> i mean it was nice and, and flattering <laughs> but uh um, validation though but at, at the same time I, you know without sounding insensitive but i'm going to i couldn't stand dealing with 75 women a day it was a pain in my ass because women hate men but they also hate women just as much as they hate women so it was like damn there's a lot of hate they're hating everybody out there this is a lot of hatred up in here i gotta go where there's less <laughs> negativity <laughs> hatred up in here now I, the the wage gap the wage gap thing makes me insane uh, i see it on facebook all the time people are like oh it's so unfair and i'm like no it's it's not unfair it's, it's not. actually it's actually free it, it, it's it is it is indicative of free market also here's the thing that that's difficult too because let's just say that you know, well, this, you know, this guy is doing the same job that this woman is and they work the same hours, but, you know, he's being paid, uh, he's being paid more than she is for doing the same work. Like, okay, well, what's this, what, what do you qualify as the same work? You know, let's look at the stats. I mean, like, is he, are they, are they only in the same job or is they doing the same work? Because they're, in my line of work, there is a difference because if, you know, just because someone else has my job position, doesn't mean that they're going to be paid as much as I am. Because I'm better than they, than they are, and and that reflects in my pay grade. So let's just say, like you know, there's, there's there's a woman who's being paid vastly fucking more than a man because he's not you know doing anything. And there's a handful of other variables. What's your tenure like? How long have you been there? Um, right, exactly. How, there's there's so many things. How well did you negotiate yeah. your pay in the fucking interview? Like it's and, there's so many different like, things. That's that's things. the biggest thing too. Well, I was going to say, like, one of the things that also is, like, really big on all that is, like, men make more money. We also do a lot of the work that women won't do because it's too hard. Well, not even and that. because I would, you could die. I, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't even say that. I would say like, we just have different interests in jobs. Like, you look at the nursing field. More women by a gigantic margin are in nursing than men are. But you look at, yeah. you know, construction worker. You very rarely see a woman in construction. It just, mm-hmm. it, it just, it goes down to what women like to do and what men like to do, or right. you know what they can do or what they've, you know, been raised or willing to do. to do. You know, it, it's yeah, it's it's it has nothing to do with men make more money than women, and that's the way it is, and that's the way it always will be. It's like nine hundred fucking variables. Like, but that, that is that is that's... one of the biggest ones because one of the, the the figures that that feminists like to look at is. The overall men make more money than women. Well, that's yeah. because for many reasons, like, it, but but yeah, particularly I mean, 
the the interest it's life in choices. Jobs. Yeah, exactly. It's life it's life choices. I mean, like, and that because we've 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 run into this before yeah, in the field where like you'd have um, women come in the office and they they'd be like, you know, I'm looking for a job. Be like, okay. I mean, and like these are like, and when I say women. I don't mean like these aren't like the the kind of women that come in and like you know dirty work boots and flannel. Right. Where like you could tell that they've been out in the hey. field and seen some shit. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like, but like you know, these women come in and they've got like their painted nails and their and like their fantastic hair and all their makeup on. They're like, we want to work in the field. And it's like, okay, well, you know, what are you what are you looking to do? Well, I want to I want to work out on a derrick because that's where you make the most money. And I'm like, okay, you have no idea what you're talking about right look i'll be honest with you i can glance at you right now and tell you that you're going to probably not last an hour because it's grueling it's hard it's fucking super dangerous i mean here's the here's, here's, here's the reality i mean this is why like you know people on pipeline work on pipelines make so much fucking money because we were so we were hydro testing a pipe okay i mean when you hydro test a pipe i, I know i know this is i'm sorry this is like the the, the nuts and bolts of our uh, a gas infrastructure, but this is this is relevant. So there's a bunch of men, and they go down there, and they they dig this big fucking trench, and they put the sandbags down, and then they put the pipe in there. The pipe is basically laid where it's going to be, but then they're going to hydro test it. Whenever you hydro test uh, the pipe before it actually has all the packed dirt around it and all the rock bedrock that's good that they're going to put around it to keep it stable. Whenever you hydro test it, it they're going to they're going to basically force feed this thing a shitload of water just to make sure it doesn't have any cracks in it. And uh, what's going to happen is the is the pipe is going to like w- wiggle around like a snake, but one foot of this thing is 800 pounds, and so I mean like imagine you know like a five so like imagine a pipeline that's literally 150 miles long, but you're doing a section that's about 20 miles long, and it starts wiggling around like a snake, like inside this trench, and each you know five feet of it is about four and a half thousand pounds. So, I mean, this is a serious, dangerous thing. And we were hydro testing a pipe and there was a bunch of guys out there and they were, they were away in the safe zone like they were supposed to be. Pipe starts fucking wiggling around like a snake, busts one of the bolts off. It flies at over 6,000 feet per second right through a guy's hard hat, kills him instantly. I mean, like this is the kind of work that men do out in the field. There is rarely ever a woman in the field, especially whenever it comes to like working the actual oil pumps and oil derricks. Yeah, those fucking things will rip your goddamn arm off. If you're not, if you're fucking around or you have like super long hair, I mean, like they practically don't even let you do it if you have long hair because it'll literally rip your head off. I mean, you, you'll be scalped at the very least if you're lucky. It's incredible. And like these women are like, you know, well, I don't see why I can't do it. It's like, no, you can but be aware that it's going to be terrible <laughs> and, and you're going to, and you're going to hate it. And then if you get out there and you suck at it, they're not going to pay you very well. They might let you keep doing it. They're not going to pay you the same as the guys that are out there that are total roughnecks. Can barely speak. They can barely. They, they speak. Their only language is English, and they can barely speak that. You know, I mean, like these guys are fucking hardcore. Garen V three says hello. Question for the lumberjack top right. Do you know Imagine Dragons? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of them a time or two. I don't. You, I don't know what that means. Are you radioactive, dude? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> I don't know enough I Imagine know Dragons to make quippy to make quippy one liners. Are you a believer? <laughs> I mean, no. I don't believe. <clears throat> I don't believe. I don't believe anything ever. I'm a believer. Get the fuck out of here, God. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where you get to have like first-hand experience of toxic masculinity. Hey. Oh man, you what are you like twelve? <laughs> terrible. I actually, was, I was actually going to make that joke originally, but I decided no, I'm not. Well, yeah, but that. you are like twelve though. I expect that kind of shit from you. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if, you know, I oh god that's funny it's that actually made my night story. thank you thank oh. you no not you i'm not talking to you mm. I'm talking to garen, garen he's power garen. top yeah garen, garen goes power top when garen becomes appropriately <laughs> fit he will definitely become a power bottom it's not the right garen it's close enough garenish Okay, what Garen? What Garen do you think it is? I don't know. Ah, oh, fuck it. Just, well, look, I, look. We're talking about toxic masculinity right now. I would. Garen. I'm just going to force my own opinion of what Garen. Garen that is to be the Garen that I desire. Wow, that is toxic. That is the that is the pent ultimate toxic. Oh, so I mean, like, uh, what can I say except him? <laughs> oh that my was- god. You know what? 
uh, every time I do something terrible to Neil, I fucking link him that song from Moana. That, I don't know what can I say is. except the the rock sings it. What can I say except you're welcome? Oh, if Flim Flam is movie. in. What? Dude, that movie's good. I liked it. I, seen I liked it. it a lot. I thought it was really good. I like <clears> the, <throat> the extremely flamboyant crab. You would. I would. I would actually. That is that is completely correct. Kind of reminds me of like, you know, uh, if you're going to, if, if Liberace was a monster in Monster Hunter. Oh. I think we lost Neil, by the way. So this is That's just okay. the Frank look, and No, it's fine. Neil, this look, is the Frank and Neil podcast. Look deep, look Frank deep into my, un, <laughs> my unblinking spectacled eyes. You know, you're welcome. I'll, I won't listen to you, Frank. You only got eight teeth, man. <gasps> Maybe if you could just draw me better. <laughs> That's not my fault I was drawn this way. Maybe instead of imagining dragons, I should be imagining teeth. I wish you would have. I wish you would have imagined to you. So that was back when we were uh, Frank and Beans, I believe. Yeah, dude, that was that was the uh, that was the OG. Hey, Kyle, what's up? The show just got better because Neil left. You know what? I agree. It's true. My only a, my only sad. The only sad part is that he's not here to hear all the shit talking that we're doing. But I like to imagine that I like to imagine that he's just sitting there, his heart's all a flutter, thinking that people are being mean to him. He'll just come back and blog about it or something. <laughs> He'll blog about it. He's gonna put on his own flannel. Be like, today we're talking about talking masculinity. They mean to me. <laughs> they made fun of me. <laughs> they made fun of my faux stash. <laughs> Shut up. What do you like talking about that. in those podcasts? We talk about. Well, at the moment, we're talking about um, the the flawed concept of toxic masculinity and how it doesn't exist. That's what I talked about. But we're talking about kind of like ultimately, and we're kind of talking about the Gillette ad that came out about how we're bad at being men by showing us how manly we are. And you know, I mean, is this really the best men can get? It, you know, I don't think it's the best, but I think it's pretty fucking close. You know what? I will say this: I will not buy a Gillette razor ever again. I won't either because they're overpriced. I mean, <laughs> I also don't, you know, really use. Oh, well, yeah, it's true. So, I, um, <laughs> I tend to uh, I, I buy the really cheap razors because, you know, I don't like to spend money. I can never use cheap razors because my face literally will eat them in like one like quarter stroke just and it's done. <laughs> like and throw it away. <laughs> I mean, like I even do that with like Gillette razors. That's why, you know, I don't shave. I save so much money. And I spend it all on beer. Products. Neil looks like Sal from Impractical Jokers. I don't know. What, I, I have heard of it, but I've never watched it. I'll have to take let's, your word for it. Let's see. So, Shit Quattro is where it's at. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there, there was one time where uh, I pinned my yarmulke back and I, um, I bought really good <laughs> razors. And I, I felt like I was going to puke in the parking lot because I felt like I'd made a terrible mistake. I spent like I spent like twelve dollars on razors, and I I was just I was sick to my stomach. I go to a barber, and I get trimmed, and I spend I, more money on that. I have I have literally never done that. I have never done that before in my life. But I but part of me wants to, but, but like the the weird part is like I just I don't know. Cause they'll be like, hey, I want you to make my mustache look good. And I'm sure the guy'd be like, yeah, I could do that. But I, I just think that he'd be like, oh, I mean, better than it already does. And I'd be <laughs> like, I know, right? And then I just leave. You know, and then nothing would happen. No <laughs> dicks to the shave, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, you know, I was talking, I was talking to Neil uh, earlier today, and I said that um, uh, I, I think I linked it in the Discord, but there was a song uh, uh, from uh, a Mel Brooks op- uh, opera called um, "A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum," and it's a, it's a song by Melius Gloriosus in the movie. It's called "Bring Me My Bride." And I think if if toxic masculinity was actually to be a thing, I think that that would be its theme song and it is so fucking funny oh my god like i thought i was gonna die it was so funny but yeah no i mean so yeah uh garen we were talking about what do you think what do you think lumberjack does he what what you want to try that again uh i love you and don't activity once i fucking step i love you Garen, I love you, and I want you to love you more than anyone can ever tell you. But I don't understand what any of that means. And if I, a lumberjack I just, could lumberjack, would a lumberjack jack lumberjacks? 
A lumberjack would definitely jack off lumberjacks if he's you, for sure. I mean, whatever, dude. It takes the protein. Are we hitting bedrock here, guys? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, no. we were just we weren't trying to get too deep. We were trying to deep until you got back, you know. So we were just kind of like trying to, you know, be more or less entertaining. Just we're talking, talking about to our loyal things. fans and dragging these nuts across my face, and here you are ruining Why it. Why don't? Did you? What about, would just, you, dra- what about just dragon nuts? What about imagine dragon nuts? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Why? Ah, that you? was terrible. Look, we we had we had good we had solid quality jokes the entire time you were gone. You Your dumbass did. comes back and it was just fucking terrible. Uh, is it, you is did. it just me, or did the uh, the quality <laughs> of the podcast get a little worse? Like, yeah, I mean, I already dropped it down to fucking like what is it, one sixty? <laughs> when you come back, I don't know, man. We, we keep asking him that. And he's yeah, let me drop it down to one sixty. Dude, we were on absolutely on to something. We were talking about how toxic masculinity is not a thing, and feminists can pretty much just kiss my ass. <laughs> I can leave again if you guys want. I mean, <laughs> no, you're beautiful. Uh, you come back here, like you're the host. We, we need, need you. We need your bandwidth. I think that <laughs> also, also true, also true. Because God knows, I can't do it. <laughs> Uh, so we need, I think, I think, don't we, didn't we have like a couple of other um, topics that we still haven't really quite touched on yet? Because I know, I know yeah, that in, I in the discussion, like there was a, yeah, well, because we're, we have uh, the, the gift of verbal diarrhea. Yeah, yeah. shut the fuck up, Neil. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's terrible. You should, you should be respected in all things. No, Neil, you should talk. Come on. We've uh, touched on just about everything, to be honest, uh, in one way or another. There is, I'm sorry. I had a really good question. Who would you say the poster child for masculinity is? I think that is a good question. Frank, how are you talking about your mouth isn't moving? It's because uh, this may surprise you. But, Cinema magic. Uh, this is uh, this actually isn't me. It's a <laughs> it's a realistic looking facsimile that would even fool my own children. So I can understand why why you would think that it wasn't me. Our talented uh, but artist. It's definitely it's definitely just the pure talent that we have on our art department. <laughs> It's the modern fucking Mona Lisa. Also has to do with the fact that like I have like I have like three three up and I can't apparently do what happens when you die, you turn into meat. I whenever you whenever uh I couldn't do Where's audio you? and video. I mean, it depends if you get like a really shitty casket or you could turn into dust. That's also a thing. Listen, we're not going down that rabbit hole, all right? <laughs> no, we pretty much covered it. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Things. So, right. so we're talking about the we're talking about like the what you say the the the, the role or uh... the poster child of like when you when you say masculinity, what who do you think of? Oh, okay. Uh, real I'll, or real I'll, I'll, I'll or, you guys. Like, or not real or fictional? It could be cremated. <laughs> Look, anytime that you're nearby, Kyle, I get cremated. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> That's rocking. <laughs> Oh baby, it's <laughs> rocking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got a poster child for. Okay, let's go. Yeah, okay. Ron Swanson. Also, the Rock. I, I agree with that. Get the fuck out of here. But you're not wrong. I mean, like he's a great, I mean, he's a great example. He, I mean, yeah. Okay, I'm, the I'm, question I'm, did I'm, say real or fictional. By the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're all right, real or fictional. I mean, I I forgot about that. You said. I mean, I thought you're just being a chud. But actually, no. The <laughs> actor that plays Ron Swanson is pretty damn masculine too. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, yeah. James Charles. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Time for the Google. Look, he's gonna yep. make you Google. James Charles as a man. So as as a uh, as a man woman, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you're, if you're into that, I look, guess. You're taking the <laughs> no. bait. You guys are dummies. <laughs> no, I mean, at least it wasn't anything terrible. I don't care. I don't. I don't know who it is. I, I actually agree with Kyle. He's a great. He's a great example of um of overall masculine um I agree. traits, especially since he just recently came out and pretty much uh, lambasted SJW culture, which I find extremely um enjoyable. Brave. Bruce Jenner is definitely a very, uh, a very much a man. He's just not very masculine for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he was. There, he, he was, there was a great, there was a great um, discussion I, I heard about uh, Bruce Jenner where I, I am surprised that there are not more women that are mad as hell that Bruce Jenner made Woman of the Year because we want we we firmly prove that uh, there that we can that men can do everything better than women, including being women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's like. I'm not, I'm not even gonna get into it. I'm just gonna shut up. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Frank? 
I think it's best that I just keep my mouth shut. What do you? What about you, Frank? Who do you? Who uh, do you think? Look, I if I if think? I had to pick, if I had to pick one if I had to pick one and it, and it would be real. I think Marcus Aurelius would probably be like my top pick for poster child for for manliness. I don't know who that is. He is the uh, philosopher emperor. Oh, What's up, Garen? Oh. Hi, how's it going? I'd say uh, you look picks... me in my eye, but I don't have any. He's probably saying that you're the poster child to masculinity. Oh hell yeah, you damn right I am. No, I think Mark. I think for me, Marcus Aurelius probably is because he's the um, he's also the uh, overall poster child for stoicism, which I think is a an excellent quality to have among responsible um, male figures. So I mean, to me, like because if you read if you read uh, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, I mean the the ideal masculine figure personified is pretty much what he wrote about. Uh, in his in his journal about things that he attempts to aspire to in his day to day. I mean, I think that like in, in to me, it's because it's a very short book. So I mean, I I do recommend people go out and read it or whatever, listen to audio book, uh, or whatever. But yeah, Mar- for me, Marcus Aurelius, absolutely. That that would be my choice. Good answers. Good answers. Oh, thanks. Fantastico. You'll have to literally send me some of those links, friend, because I would like to listen to that or read them at some point, since I do read from time to time now. <laughs> Uh, if you have a if you have a Kindle account, you can actually get his meditations for free. I don't, but I am planning you on getting should, one. Should because so. it's free. I, I'm planning. On, it's it's in my to do list. All right. <clears throat> um, I don't know. What do we really have? Anything? Do we really have anything else that we need to really? You add? didn't tell us yours. Oh, we showed you ours, but you didn't show you mine. Huh? What? I'm sorry. I I get a little <laughs> stage fright. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know, man. I mean, there's so many of them, and like. I, I, I'm just gonna go back to Gaston. I mean, that dude. No <laughs> but he's a dick. Oh man, like, look. I guess that's. I guess that's fair because I mean, he is. He is just an asshole. But I mean, he. You know, if you really think about it, you know, he really is. He is. He is man dialed up to eleven. He uh, is, with the exception yeah. of the like, absolute lack of education. I mean, and the fact that you know he dies at the end. I mean, if, if he was a real spoilers, man, he God, obviously one. Oh, sorry. God, I've never seen the movie. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That was actually the one gripe that I did have with the uh, new Beauty and the Beast movie, which I actually watched the other day, is that Gaston wasn't swole enough to be Gaston. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but he was manly enough to be Gaston, though. I mean, he played fucking Dracula. He, all right, I'll give him that. But like, look, I'm still on the screen for the massive spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog. Arthur but Morgan. I mean, Arthur I Morgan. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Arthur Morgan does, does a lot of, I don't know. I mean, like, butch, I guess we could. I mean, I'm more of a subordinate than anything else, but for some reason, I can kill half the fucking county. But for some reason, you're still my boss, and I don't know how that works. I'm going to lose in the end. I don't know why, but I'm going to. If I had to pick a real person, it'd probably be Terry Crews. Because, I mean, Terry Crews Get the is... fuck out of here. He Tell is me. such a big fucking whiner. He, whatever. I love Terry Crews. I think he's fucking awesome. I think Terry Crews actually has traded in a substantial amount of his masculine traits for feminine traits, just so well, that he can be part of feminine. Uh, and I he's think... he's literally part of a broader SJW culture that's just fucking disgusting. <laughs> I think that's just I, your like opinion. Man. I I used to like him. I did, and then and then he just start, he gets up and he starts talking about the fucking you know all these d- different SJW topics that I'm not going to go into because it's not this particular uh, discussion. We but, can save I mean, for another podcast. He just he. Whenever he started talking about, like, you know, <clears throat> women are just being victimized by the system. Like, get the fuck out of here. Get out of here with that stupid shit. Jesus, God. But he has Shut an art here. show, and it's awesome, and I don't know. You know what? He also is a big-time PC gamer, and he fucking has a channel on Twitch. And you know what? I still think he's fucking stupid. Well, <laughs> again, everybody has an opinion, and some of them are just wrong. I mean, well, that's... that's <laughs> you know, hashtag feminism. To me, it goes along the lines of what... Jerry was saying before, especially when it comes to fucking Twitter. I mean, you have to sum up your entire feeling in 255 characters. Or Unless like, you're Alton Brown, then you've got to post a note and you can do more. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like when he says the system, I mean, I think he's really talking about Hollywood, but like, I don't know. It's, it's the, the Hollywood system. It's, um, but that's not wrong. That's definitely not wrong. It's always been like the Hollywood's fucked up when it comes to women. But 
Kyle says he put women on the spot for sexual harassment in his own work environment. He called them out. Well, good. That's yeah. gr- that's great. That's great that he does that. <laughs> but I mean, he's still he's like I said, he still he still drinks in the liberal Kool Aid, where he's like, you know, well, we have systemic oppression. We have you know, and I'm I'm like, okay, but where though? Yeah, and then it's always it's always it's it's the same shit every time. Well, where do we have systemic oppression? Who we just do? Okay, shut up. And it, it's these it's these fucking celebrities that get up on their high horse and their platform, and they scream from the heavens about you know, oh my god, my oppression. Oh my god, listen to how terrible things are for for the people that I represent. Shut up, shut up, people I represent. I'm telling these people how fucking oppressed you are. Just let right. me tell them how oppressed you are. Just I hate listen. that. Oh god. Oh, sure, that's, a that's a good one. Hulk Hogan. I mean, Hulk honestly, Hogan. Hell yeah. <laughs> Rand, uh, Randy Macho Man Savage. There you go. Like, that's a good I one. Mean, like realistically, like pretty much all the like buff dudes in like the eighties, like Schwarzenegger, Stallone. You've got fucking I don't know. Uh, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you got Fabio. I mean, you had like all these like super. I, 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 what, I love Fabio. What is this? I would fuck. <laughs> I would fuck Fabio, but I, I don't I don't know if I would really call him super masculine. What is this? Expendables for? <laughs> <laughs> like Chuck Norris. I mean you got all those like just super yeah, Steven Steven Seagal. Uh, Listen. There, Steven okay. Seagal's a fucking rapist though. <laughs> like but he's then, a little it, I guess like he would be he would be what you would consider toxic. the overly he would be the over over masculine. <laughs> he, he would be the, the toxic he, part. He captures women and hides them in their basement. And I'm not joking about that. He does that shit. <laughs> what are you going to do when the Hulkster runs wild on you? <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. <laughs> but I mean, like, I'm going to well, come down there, and if I find somebody touching somebody's no no bits, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> maximum masculinity, 110%. <laughs> yeah, it is maximum. If you go back in the caveman days, they used to beat women over the head with clubs yeah. and just drag them back to the cave. It's a lot they like Steven been Seagal, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, and they, I'm, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that you can confirm this, but definitely, definitely rode Velociraptors while they did it. <laughs> oh, for sure. They, is, they. I mean, I played Ark. I know. I know how these things work. Like I played. I've, I've seen it. They might even fuck the Velociraptor. Go, go on. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. I, could you cite your sources on that, please? <laughs> Did you take? I think I've video? seen an article or two on RedTube or something. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I like how I like how we went from from the masculinity of of Macho Man Randy Savage, which is apparent, to actually having uh, uh, consent, like it, not necessarily consensual, carnal relations with with ancient reptiles. It's interspecies I mean, like, erotica. I mean, I'm not look. I'm not saying that I'm not on board. I'm just saying that I'm curious how we got here. You're not curious. You knew this was going to happen. No, no, I'm I'm definitely curious. Or no. Frank Frank is totally curious. I'm totally curious. He's a little bi curious. Let's let's curb it a little bit here. Okay. But, like, really, though, like, the 80s and the 90s, like, that was, like, I feel like the peak of, like. It was because you still had had a culture that supported the idea of men being men. Yeah, well, yeah exactly. you had like, I mean, like, like action movies and like Bruce well, Willis. Not, and I well, mean, not like, just that. It was it wasn't just about like it wasn't just about because even in the eighties it wasn't just about um, you know like he, he who has the biggest explosions win. Uh, it was also a time whenever you still had a dependency on on male role models actually being good male role models. Paradigmas. <laughs> Put him down out in the middle of the city. I, uh, I'm pretty sure yeah. they call that just God of War Five. Wait a second. <laughs> so let me ask you this: What movie can you think of that is like the epitome of masculinity? And it can't oh, wow. be The Expendables. I played yeah. that fucking Pokemon no. trailer. That was just yeah, a, dude. That was a given. That's like, a shameless. You can't, dude, you I can't have to think get about that it. much man in one fucking hour. You know, yeah. I don't know, dude. Like, masculine like movie. I don't know. You know, despite despite how historically in credit it is, I would say that like a great example, and I and I hate to even give this to him because he's terrible. Uh, and the movie, historically speaking, was fucking garbage. But I really like watching it anyway. Braveheart. Oh yeah, 
It's good. I mean, like, because it, it literally has everything in it. I mean, like, it has like you know responsible, responsible um, father son relationships. Um, it has you know the attempt, at least you know the attempt to to um, protect and defend the nuclear family. Uh, it has uh, everything to do with um, uh, personal responsibility, and then uh, <laughs> and, and and taking personal responsibility for things that you've chosen to do. So, I mean, it. Give me back my son. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, because like, for, like, really though, because I think Braveheart is like is a good example of like a very a very positive masculine movie, despite the fact that, like I said, you know, um, it's it's absolutely historic garbage. Oh yeah, uh, and and it's um, you know, William Wallace was shitty. So I mean, like, but William Wallace in the movie wasn't so bad, even though yeah, like realistically like, he's, he's a very likable character. Horrible. Yeah, he's I a mean, fat, stinking like, drunk. That's, that's the epitome of based on a true story. It was based on yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, if by base you mean it took place in Scotland, England was definitely involved somehow, and, and William Wallace did live approximately <laughs> in that time. The name is big it's fucking a, sword. It's not a dramatization. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not like hey, we looked at history, and this is what because otherwise it would have been like a drastically different movie, and nobody would have liked it. Uh, yeah, for sure. But, like it, William Wallace was the right prick, dude. Mel Gibson went to Scotland Gibson, and looked at a yeah. statue, and was like, "Hey, I can make a movie off." This. <laughs> Listen, if Mel Gibson was still directing it, it would still be the same fucking movie. It doesn't matter. Because I love, it's I love Gibson. You know what? You know what? Here's here's another here's a flip side of the um, the overly masculine. Um, I guess problem with with Braveheart is that the casting for um, his wife in the in the direction it was said that you know she had to uh, nowhere in there to say that she had to be like a good actress. But she had to be uh, approximately Scottish, <laughs> and she had to be extremely attractive. Approximately. And then obviously, he, uh, he, obviously, he had to fucking have like a, a completely naked sex scene with her. I mean, it just blows me away. I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, like, he Wasn't totally he, had only the she was the fr- most creative, uh, pro- uh, obvious creative intentions. She was French clearly. in the movie. No, no, uh, the first wife. Oh yeah, yeah. No, the other one. Look, historically, okay. Look, mm. let's be real. Historically. She was eight whenever he died, so <laughs> like, like, that's a fucking make it super weird. Yeah, uh. eight, and she was eight, and she was already married. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> well, she's already married in the movie too. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what yeah. about you, Jer? What's your movie? I can't fucking think of one. Like, I legit can't think of. I mean, I don't know. Die Hard. I- I fucking I actually, love. I have, a, a good one. I have another. I actually have a really good one that just epitomizes to me. Jer is my representation of you, and also throwing in masculinity at the same time. And I would like to share that with you. And I, I think that you might agree. Uh, Hobo with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hobo with a shotgun. There was a sex scene in Braveheart. Yeah, man. There was a couple. Yeah, the very, very beginning. Yeah, there's um like the, the, the one in the very the beginning. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. William Wallace fucking bangs his wife in the forest. And then William Wallace. Bangs the French queen or the English queen. English. <laughs> no, she's French. Well, she was, oh, well, she French? She was a French princess. She French princess, English queen. Yeah, man. He's just banging everybody. Um, hey, I got the toilet behind the fucking grove tree. <laughs> <laughs> I showed him a cable if you know what I'm saying, boy. So I've got a movie for you. What about The Rock? Like the movie The Rock. Not <gasps> The Rock. That's a great yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, it's a very, good it's definitely, movie. It's, it's definitely a good action movie. I don't know if I call like the, uh, an example, a, a, an example of positive masculinity. Listen, well, I, I mean, we we just said masculinity in general. I don't think we said positive. I'll, oh, okay. Here, here's here's your ultimate masculine movie, and it's not Conan, which that comes in close second. Well, get um, the fuck out of here, then. Yeah, three hundred. No. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. That was you know, a great nah, fucking movie. Uh, right? I'll give it to you. I, I, my, my immediate knee-jerk reaction is no, but <laughs> you know the, but no, I, I agree. If you, Dude, if you take no, the entire yes. first like ten minutes of the movie is telling you telling you how any it's boy born in Sparta, if he's weak, he gets fucking thrown into a pile of dead bodies to die with him. That's pretty fucking metal, right there. All right. <laughs> I mean, that's metal. I don't really know if I would, I would put that. I mean, I'm pretty sure that like it's actually like the um, the justification for the Gillette ad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, is this the best a man can get? Back is this the, the best a man can get? Takes an infant, be like, well, his one arm's a little bit bigger than the other one. Throw him in the pile of dead bodies. Got to go. <laughs> I mean, his head's a little bit lopsided. My lord, he'll probably grow out of it. Well, fuck it. I'll just fuck some more. <laughs> Let's get it in there. Cause right. test, 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 toast. 
give it two Maybe. test tickles. Well, you also have like Predator. I mean, you have pretty much. No, that's just that's an action. action. No, no, no. How no, is that no. not? That is the ultimate like dude fucking fighting for survival against an unknown. No, thing. we're talking about like he, we're talking about we're, we're movies that would extol the virtues of of what uh, it is to actually be. Uh, a man. I mean, the closest that you would get is at one point he he's like he's like no get to the trouble <laughs> and he like just wants the girl to run. I mean that's that's it. That's the end. Everything else it's, is just like it's just like it's, it's a bunch of dudes protecting this poor little lady that they find in the middle of the jungle, and they're just fighting against some big old predator guy, and it's all this like testosterone pumping, just guns a blazing. Tell me that that's not. Come on, don't bullshit me. Oh, the don't be a pussy. Dude, almost, don't be a pussy. Almost every Denzel movie is a masculine as fuck movie. Like, Except for, uh, what was it, Pearl Harbor. Was he in Pearl Harbor? Huh? Was he? For, for, wasn't he in Pearl no, Harbor? No, that was um, Cuba Getting Jr. Oh, that was Cuba Getting Jr. Racist fuck. <laughs> I thought, now we go I to the Denzel, other problem of this movie. <laughs> I thought Denzel Washington was in that movie. I'm stand corrected. Uh, yeah. Um, I, w- I would go uh, you know, one step further and say John Q. You ever see that one? What the hell is that? It's a movie about with Denzel and his son. Son has a heart failure. Uh, he doesn't have insurance. He tries, you know, he sells his car, sells his house, gets a fundraiser going. He still can't afford a heart transplant for him. So he uh, holds the entire hospital hostage. With a, oh, that do it with a with an unloaded uh, nine millimeter pistol, and says Super. you're gonna freaking operate on my nine year old son or people gonna die. <laughs> you know, I actually uh, I I completely agree with Kyle because like I, I remember actually watching I remember the Titans. I actually weirdly even though I'm like not really much of a sports person, I actually really enjoy sports movies. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, like I I completely agree with that because that definitely falls in the category because and there's another one with like The Rock that he does something similar where he. Uh, attempts to uh, impart um, wise man virtues on children uh, in in a positive way that I just I, I think is very um, becoming and something that we don't have enough of in in present society. Now you said fucking Conan earlier, and that goes back to the no, <laughs> probably <douchebag>. not so <laughs> much because I mean Conan was I mean he's a bad man. I mean even in the books he's a bad man. Yeah, that's true. I mean the only thing that was nice is that in the in the movie and in the books. Um, that was like Conan was probably the ultimate expression where the hyper masculine meets the feminist movement and like this amazing bullet train collision because you either had women who were chained up to the wall being used as sacrifices and sex slaves or you had women who are as much, if not more dangerous than Conan Red on, on like any given. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking of Red Sony the movie. It's just absolutely terrible. But yeah, <laughs> Red Sony is an excellent example. I mean, and like you know the uh, the different witches from uh, from uh, Stygia. I mean, like they they were all fucking super dangerous. They were hypersexualized, just like Conan. I mean, that's one of the things that. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure I'm surprised. I'm surprised Conan hasn't been held up to this like you know uh, feminist just being like this is the worst thing that's ever been made. <laughs> There are muscles and titties and swords and stuff. It's the worst. <laughs> and magic and all sorts of bad things. Yeah, fucking, I can only imagine Truly Puff just flapping her bad arms at it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my best attempt. God, fucking did you hear Neil's super condescending laugh? <laughs> <laughs> you are extremely comical. I'm glad I have you on this show. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the podcast. <laughs> Yo, fuck you! <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, kindergarten cop. I mean, you know. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So and all these great things about he's, he's a cop, you idiot. Wait, 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 wait. What about what about Commando? Since we're doing Arnold movies, I mean, you can pretty much say like every Arnold fucking movie, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, well, no, I mean, like because because you can't, I mean, you can't really do it with the Predator. I mean, jingle like, all the way. <laughs> jingle all the way. Definitely jingle all the way. Out of here. I mean, look, I think Sinbad was probably better, the better father in that movie. Yeah, I think <laughs> he so was too. the better male. <laughs> I mean, obviously, fucking Alakazam. 
Is that a Shaq movie? I think it was just called Shazam. <laughs> no, Shazam. It, Shazam's the fucking. Shazam. Shazam. Like, whatever. And that was Shaq. And that was yeah. Shaq. One of the worst movies ever made. No. no. Yes. No. No. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I think you just you just look. <laughs> you know, never mind. <laughs> It was a great movie. It was, I think so too. I actually really enjoyed that movie. Jake Lazy Way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're petering out here, guys. Um, so let's wrap it up. Final thoughts, Jer? I think masculinity is needed in our modern day society, and I think that it is up to people of our age that are now raising kids to just teach our kids to not be fucking dicks. <laughs> I don't think I don't think down to. I don't think that it's a problem of toxic masculinity and like stuff like that. I think it just teach your kids to not be fucking assholes, and it won't be a problem. I mean, it's kind of always been Boom. that way. But end of the fucking <laughs> podcast. You guys don't need your final thoughts. We're done here. Close it up. <laughs> don't be dicks. <laughs> <laughs> like, like seriously, like that's. I, I just feel like that's just really what it boils down to. Is like, be nice to people. You see somebody getting bullied, <laughs> don't be a dick. You know, stand up for him. You know, just have common fucking decency. Wrong podcast to have my Peter out. Dude, this is the right podcast. This is uh, the podcast to have your dick out. <laughs> Frank, you well, see it go. Uh, I, I think that the Gillette was complete garbage. And it was just more more social justice pandering that absolutely does, isn't needed. I think the worst part about it is it would be different if it was done in a in a manner of which I was actually trying to solve some kind of social ill, but at the same time, you know, are we, are we really interested in leaving it up to corporate shills to, to, to extol the virtues, uh, virtues and vices of our generation upon our children? Are they, are, are they the correct people to tell us yay or nay on how we should actually raise children? I mean, I think that kind of thing should be taught at home schools in your community. It shouldn't be taught through a fucking ad. That's going to just make money. Stupid. Especially a fucking corporation that has been caught using child labor in other fucking countries. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're, you know, <laughs> like, what is it? Uh, yeah, the, tell you, me how to raise my fucking kid as all those little Chinese made my fucking soccer balls. Like, come on, make your fucking razors. Like, whatever, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's tell it's me what's right and wrong, that, please, July. It's definitely one of those things that I, I really strongly disagree with. I disagree with the uh, the overall message, and I also disagree in the manner in which that it was told. Also, since, like, you know, basically, we're seeing... We're seeing more and more from Hollywood and corporations how they want to interject their life, interject their their media blitz into um, the the virtue of the household, and it we really shouldn't be allowing it, but unfortunately we're going to because we don't have any option. They have all the time; they get to use it. The only other option is just to make your voice heard and just don't buy Gillette and pretty much tell them to suck it. Unfortunately, there's enough idiots out there that all they do is sit there and talk about Gillette and it makes their stock go up. So there we are. Good call. What about you, Neil? What do you got? My final thought is this. Uh, as with any movement, whether it be feminism, masculinism, if that's a thing, doesn't matter what it is. Bowel movement. <laughs> you, <laughs> you get what you need out of it. You, you have a strong message starting out. Black Lives Matter, feminism, fucking everything. You, you have a good, strong, driving message, and then you get what you want for the most part. Call it a victory, dude. Don't just keep on going. You keep on going, and then then you kind of lose all meaning. I mean, you you like like the Black Lives Matter movement, for example. You even have a lot of conservatives saying, "Hey, I could get behind that movement until they like just take it too far." Dude, if you if you have an idea, if you have a struggle in life, stick with that one struggle. Form your movement. Get it done. And then call it quits. Then form another movement for a different topic. It's just you're lumping everything into one. You're generalizing everything, and I think it's just lazy, <laughs> honestly. Like you, you're like, well, we don't like the inequality in wages, or we don't like the inequality in this. Okay, cool. We've made some headway in that. We've made some movement in that. Well, I also don't like this too. Let's let's toss it. We we made some we made some progress here. Let's throw this other one on top of that. No, we hate everything. Fucking make a new movement. That's not cool. <laughs> you can't just piggyback shit onto a successful movement. I, it's bullshit to me. Anyways, the, the slow death of intersectionality. <laughs> yeah, just fucking like start over in a whole new group. Anyways, that's my thought on it. Um, thank you all 
very much for joining us tonight. We had a lot of fun. It's been a while since we all got together like this, me included. Um, and uh, we missed it. I missed it. It'd be fair to have ghetto, ghetto internet next time we do. Yeah, this thing. I mean, like I gotta get, I gotta go outside and deal with those guys. They gotta start pedaling a lot faster. I mean, I just can't, I can't deal with how how crappy they're doing. Maybe, you know, maybe really your disappointed. maybe your animator will get your four little teeth to fucking chatter. <laughs> maybe he will someday. Maybe I soon. Doubtful. We will have live action Frank. <laughs> maybe, but you know that day is definitely not today. <laughs> doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my eight ball. Uh, sources say no. What are we doing tomorrow night? Not too sure. We'll have to figure it out. Stay tuned, though. Uh, I Thank probably won't be able to Rocksmith stream because it was cutting out apparently today. <laughs> I noticed it whenever I was playing it, and it was making me really, really hostile. CGI, true. Kyle. <laughs> CGI, Frank. <laughs> I'm just going to be swinging from the roof, shooting guns and stuff. America! <laughs> <laughs> fucking marionettes. That's fucking Pikachu trailer. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Anyway, I want. I, here, here, so, like, just as a side note, I know we're not we're not children anymore. Uh, not that we ever did when we were children. But I would love to take Kyle to go see the live action Pikachu movie. But like, have him like do like LSD before he goes. No. Just no. watch him melt away. Do That'd that be amazing. Me. That's not. That's <laughs> not K. I've been waiting for a live action Pokemon movie for twenty fucking years, and this is what I get. I get Detective Pikachu with Ryan fucking Reynolds. Shut up! It looks like it's Dude, gonna it actually, be good. I, I think I might go see it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Hey, they man. are making a Mewtwo Strikes Back or whatever, like two. Because that was really <clears throat> successful. <clears throat> it was a great fucking movie, Frank. Yeah. All right, it's a funny way to say shit movie. I can equate that oh. with like Lion King too. And shit. Yeah, you know, like, come on. More man. like the Lion, the Lion King TV series. Two and a half. Men. Kingdom Hearts two point nine. <laughs> Sleep before birth. Nine. <laughs> nine. The fuck is even happening in this video game? Anyway, so uh, yeah. follow us on Twitter uh, at Dashley Men. Hit us up on Facebook. We're there as well. Got our own website, DashleyGentleman dot com. Um, we're also on Instagram. We're also on Instagram. We also have our own YouTube channel. We're all down there below. So uh, if you want to join, yep, SoundCloud as well. RedTube, iTunes, uh, Pornhub. No, we're not on that chair. <laughs> not <laughs> yet. <laughs> Frank, we're still waiting on Frank's casting couch. Yeah, we need the pleather couch. Um, <laughs> also, we are on iTunes, Google Play. So we're, we're pretty much everywhere. Just search for us. I mean, we've got a very unique name. We made fucking sure of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, Kyle agrees. The Mewtwo movie is classic. You know, it was very hyped up. It was in theaters. I never got a chance to see it. Yeah. But, anyhow. I am afraid you don't know shit about shit. <laughs> we'll, uh, we, gotta, we gotta wrap this up. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. 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 Frank waved. Digitally. You can't see it, but you know, I did I did a wave. He <laughs> waved, but it was in very low resolution. I, I, I did the yeah. It was in it was in one eighty. <laughs>